welcome. So we're just going to have a look at the hardware this time. The Morpheus Emu Morpheus, designed by Dave Rossum and the Emu back in the day, 1993, a long time ago. This particular unit here, it might not look familiar. The front is easily replaced, so we had some aluminium fascias made. So let's have a quick look at this 1U aluminium front. It does change the look of the unit completely. It looks more like a Korg Trinity now or something like that. There was the Korg T1 with the silver. Let's have a closer look. You can see we've replaced the dial. We've kept the main buttons. The power knob there, there's an option on that to remove the bezel and make it more or less prone to switching on and off. However, it's a good design anyway. You can't really switch this unit on and off. As opposed to the Echo Pro by Line 6, where they put this software power button right next to the mix knob, which is one of the most heavily used knobs on the Echo Pro. Not such a good design. In fact, I may remove that button altogether internally. Pro. Here we don't have that problem but also I'll show you in a minute on a different unit we've got in the other room with the bezel removed so it does make the button practically impossible to hit by mistake. Brilliant. We've got LED lights for all the buttons here. These do the functions, it's different modes. The main knob has been replaced with again an aluminium sort of pointer meter knob and the same with the volume control so we've got a lovely a different change of character for the front of the Morpheus there and also a little bit of mystery <laughs> who knows what any of these buttons do but there's your master preset hyper preset this one should go into your MIDI maps this one's your store button I think this one is left and right <laughs> what does this one do though This is your copy button, so this goes into your copy, all the different functions for copy, a lot to go through, but let's stick to the hardware. So one of the biggest asked questions on these machines is all about the data card. You can eject the data card and put the data card in. Now one thing I know about these data cards is that they do contain a battery backed backup. Some are recharge cards. Stay away from the recharge cards because I don't feel that they're 100% compatible. But if you do find a PCM CIA card which is battery backed up, so you can see the battery can be fitted here, then basically those are the ones to look out for. It doesn't matter what size data card that you fit in here, as in the old school SRAM data cards. So basically anything from 128K to something around 8 megabytes I've seen will work in this machine however it won't give you extra data slots or hyper presets you'll still get just the additional doubling of the RAM which is built into the unit so an, an additional 128 patches an additional 128 hyper presets and also an additional 16 MIDI maps, so effect settings and MIDI maps. A couple of other things to point out here which are handy, the front headphone jack, you can obviously fit an adapter in, into here if you need the 3.5. 3 the overall button design on these is pretty good. I've had these machines since they were born and I've never seen one which has needed a button replacement here. So the tack switches that they've used from EMU, the standard, which were fitted in 1993 and onwards, are pretty bomb proof. So I've never had a problem with any of the switches on these units. So popping the card back in, you'll notice that when we switch to our preset mode, 
we can see our patch number and we can see we've got two additional banks, number four, which is hyper presets, and number three, which is patches. Basically a duplication of bank zero. Incidentally, we come on to bank one, is the built-in sounds which come with the Morpheus. These are the OEM sounds which are loaded on the machine. They can't be erased, they're in ROM. Some of these are useful. So here we are looking at the LCD screen. This one has actually been updated and had an OLED screen fitted, so rather than the original yellow backed LCD, it has been replaced with OLED. Panther, what are we talking about today? We're talking about the Emu Morpheus. <laughs> Some more things about the Morpheus. So talking about these fascia plates so the way they designed it was pretty good because we've been able to reproduce the front panel and create an aluminium with a brushed finish if we brush this using scotch bright so basically the replacement front panel for the unit Debadged, and uh, this will disguise the unit and also give it that kind of 70s hi fi look. Check this one out a 2U version. Yeah, so the possibilities here open up. The original casing is half depth for the rack mount and it is only one U tall so there's not a lot of room in there with the board card and the sim the LCD and the button assembly and everything it doesn't leave a lot of room inside for mods so as soon as we could replace it with a one U we decided to make a two U as well so and we've done exactly that in the other room we'll see some video of that soon so the main difference on the design here for the 1U or the 2U is the size of the power button. So sometimes we might have lost this plastic bezel, but at the same time having the button inset like this means there's no possibility of turning off the unit by mistake. Although the original design is good, this makes it sort of foolproof, it can't even be pushed unless you really get deep in there on the button. What do you reckon, Tommy? <clears throat> so the main difference on the fascia plate is on the original it is actually routed and that fits a little bit more snugly with the upper case. Um, we didn't have opportunity to do the routing only the cutting unfortunately but it will still fit the case rather well once it's all fitted in um, you just need to adjust the screws slightly lovely effect we've also got titanium don't have that here going to show you that soon because we're actually going to make a coloured titanium uh, a thinner plate which will go upon the original if you wanted to disguise the unit while you're gigging. So let's compare the Ultra Proteus to the Morpheus. You can see the difference in the graphics here, but it's the same layout, phones, volume, data card, LCD, and the other relevant buttons to this machine, all identical. The reason for that is these have the same architecture the same design internally 
they have a different or slightly updated filter section with additional filters for the Ultra Proteus. There is an additional 72 pin SIM waveform uh, ROM installed on the main board. However, the socket is present within the Morpheus. This always presented some anxiety to Morpheus owners about that ROM slot and the... There was... I'm not sure on the politics involved, but the, it was a planned data ROM card, a 72-pin SIM, to fit internally to upgrade the Morpheus internal waveform memory. But for some reason, the project was cancelled. However, the Ultra Proteus was launched and it did indeed have the, I think it's kind of like a composer ROM, so there's a mixture of all world sounds. So on the Morpheus, the users were a little bit stuck because unlike the later generation Proteus 2000 range, including all the other sort of rebadged modules which come with different sims again 72 pin sims waveform sims a pactron those were readily available to upgrade at some expense at least the proteus 2000 era racks tommy, tommy. So you've waited, well, I don't know, 30 years to, to find out, and Tommy knows more about this subject on the Pactron ROM cards and compatibilities. So who would have known? So inside each module, there is a motherboard, which we'll see some photos of soon. On that motherboard is the waveform bank and that bank consists of what I would say a very condensed sample package loaded onto the 72 pin sim. Now I don't know too much about the formatting of this but I can tell you I expect the samples to be laid out in kind of a sample chain layout. So rather than having a name for each sample, like a name and directory type setup, it's more like a continuous sample that's stored on that 72 pin SIM because the samples are actually dialed up using a sample start location. I don't know too much about the internal format or the the samples themselves they may be 39 kilohertz I have to look in the specs for the digital converters but I think the sampling rate is around 40 kilohertz so we're just looking through the primary bank on Morpheus here and we can see there are different waveforms that you can select 242 in total. You'll find these upper sounds here in the ROM bank are uh, different kinds of sounds. There are a lot of sort of drum sounds, conga hits, scratches, and so on, snares, kicks. As we come down, through a lot of drum sounds here including a 909 kick right okay now we're looking at the synth waveforms we can go through and there's quite a few variations
now we're looking at some more natural sounds, some world sounds. And back into some simps, but also organ waves. These are very useful. Here, we've got some piano waveforms. And they sound quite nice especially considering the amount of space that they would have crammed these samples into along with these hundreds of other samples internally on the main board there are chips similar to the ones that are on the 72 pin sim soldered to the motherboard so how I come to the conclusion that the samples are internally triggered, not necessarily by name, a file name location in a directory, but rather by sample start location in its purest sense across the, the data ranges of the 72 pin sim internally. This is the waveform sound start position, so we can alter this up to 127 locations. We can reverse that as well, but also go into loop mode, so it can be looped for single cycle waveforms. And you can make a single cycle waveform out of any of the internal waveforms. So in conjunction with that we've got a loop offset. Within loop offset there are various parameters. We'll go over them at a later date in more detail. But for now, keep this in your mind. This is how the Morpheus triggers its internal waveform memory, at least we're trying to see from an engineer's point of view to try and, at least within our minds, understand how the, the waveforms are played back by the hardware. So coming to this conclusion, I thought I'd have a gamble and see what would happen. I decided to pull the 72-pin SIM and fit it in the Morpheus. So I powered on the unit and to my surprise, nothing happened. <laughs> I went into the menu, so one of the things that these modules have is like a startup mode. So you need to be powered off and hold, I think it's these two buttons, and then power on. Just managed to do that with one hand. So we're now in diagnostics mode. There are different pages for the diagnostic mode. But within these, this one just runs through the cycle of tests. Again, this one's an auto test, same kind of thing. This one tests the panel buttons and lights, I believe. So here we can see our data wheel moving. The, the volume control point meter. lights number four tests the LCD panel we've changed it to OLED so this isn't really applicable this one tests the internal RAM non-volatile this one tests the RAM card which is I think our data card program wrong. This will be the one on the board I believe. The GH sound wrong. If anyone's got any information on this I'd like to know. I believe again it's sounds that are on the main wrong. We have a test for MIDI. We don't want to do this one do we? <laughs> 
episode you can MIDI test, you have to plug MIDI leads in the back to get this test to work because it tests from out to in. Frequency response test, this will play a test tone. A channel test, it will play various sounds and check all the channels. Same for the effects that are built in. The audio returns. So we come through and there's, I don't see anything in this menu to enable to um, load, how do we get out, let's turn it off, <laughs> turn it back on again. So within the diagnostic menu I don't see anything to enable or unenable a waveform 72 pin sim which would have been inserted. I don't see any way that we can use the waveforms on a Morpheus with an Ultra Proteus ROM fitted. It's just not possible as far as I can see. Can someone write to Dave Frossum? <laughs> Maybe there's a special button sequence. <laughs> So what I do know is this, inside the Emu Ultra Proteus there are a group of four controller ICs which do, I believe, various jobs in the synthesizer. One of the chips is definitely for the filters. I think that one of the other chips is for kind of like the OS and I think one of the other chips is for the sample start time location like a data matrix of start locations so a table of start positions within the 72 pin sim which is installed the data patron so I took the Emu Proteus and the Morpheus and just by chance both boards were able to be um, the software ROMs could be replaced, they're in sockets. That's not the case for all of the units that are out there, some are the control ICs and the OS are soldered to the motherboard so then it's more difficult to do this mod when you have a non-socketed motherboard. Luckily I had both boards which were socketed. In fact I had a Morpheus which was sold as spares and repairs. We just had a main board and no power supply. But we managed to get it working. So we've got a Morpheus motherboard, an Ultra Proteus ROM Pactron, fitted on that motherboard and nothing happens. We, we put the control ICs for the Ultra Proteus in the Morpheus and then we power on and to our amazement the Morpheus now thinks it's an Ultra Proteus. So the OS is definitely stored on those ROMs, which one I haven't determined yet. Essentially the unit now will access not only the sounds that are stored on the main board but it will also access the sounds that are stored on the 72 pin SEM because the Morpheus thinks it's an Ultra Proteus but it kind of is <laughs> at this point now the interesting thing is the samples are accessed in a method that employs sample start location so at this point this hybrid Morpheus decides to give us access to the sim sounds on the main board of the Morpheus but in a different way for the sounds on the Ultra Proteus main board the sounds on the motherboard for the Ultra Proteus have different sample start locations and so basically it is reading random or randomized waveforms from the Morpheus bank on the motherboard sample rock. 
that gives some unpredictable results, but the sounds do sound. Uh, the oscillators sound, you can select the waveforms. Uh, the names are incorrect for what it believes to be in that sample location. The names don't reflect what you're listening to. The other thing is the samples are not necessarily tuned at this point, so the whole unit is out of tune. It's playing random samples in, well, they are fixed sample locations, but when you add into the, the mix that the sample locations that it's trying to recall are not indeed the ones they are. So basically it's shuffled the pack on the sample waveforms and giving unpredictable sounds, basically the ultimate glitch machine. The machine works in a way where some of the waveforms are obviously working because they're on the 72 pin sim and the waveforms on the 72 pin sim are the natural waveforms for the Ultra Proteus so you can get a combination of tuned waveforms and Morpheus waveforms from the main board which are have incorrect sample start locations giving an out tuned or detuned sound so a complete glitch you can either play the machine live which I've done a number of times or you could just opt to reprogram the, the machine the complete dump knowing that these are the waveforms you're recalling now so you could reorder your existing patch dump um, changing the waveforms and essentially tuning the start and end positions and retuning the waveforms so you could use a guitar tuner or so on to tune your waveforms back to your tuning probably C and then obviously you can play something a little bit more musical but still with these uh, new sounds kind of forcing you to push the envelope a little bit regarding start, sample, uh, the cycles and loop points. So taking that a bit further, there were a few more things that I found out along the way because I thought at this point I'm not stopping. This, this is probably dreams of many Morpheus owners here. <laughs> over the years thinking how am I going to get this waveform card or how can I get this programmed and the emu uh, rack mount samplers and ROM cards to go in those and you can flash your own ROM it's kind of like a, a fantasy almost <laughs> that's a lot of technical in-house know-how to burn these waveforms it's not a uh, common knowledge So, with our DIY approach at home and a little bit of risk taking, we went on to basically do a similar thing. So at this point we've got the Morpheus with the Ultra Proteus MOBO ICs on the Morpheus board. So what the heck, how about we try a Proteus 2000 SIM card so a Proteus 2000 Pactron SIM, a Composer SIM, has definitely been tried. So from a completely different architecture, um, a 72 pin SIM, we know there's waveforms on there and however we don't know exactly how they're structured, but at the end of the day I had a go, we put the the Pactron from the Proteus 2000 in the Morpheus with the Ultra Proteus ROMs. At this point we come to the conclusion that the way the Ultra Proteus ROMs are set up for the waveform access of the 72 pin SIM, it doesn't matter what 72 pin SIM you stick in there, it's going to try and read the samples from it. So there's a lot of things you can experiment and I'm sure there's a few things that um, could be done in the future with some skilled electronics engineers. So I think there's a, a kind of random glitchy way to load sounds onto or waveforms 
or any kind of data onto the 72 pin SIM, stick it in the Morpheus and you've got a sort of glitch bank of random noises but it's a bit like the machine gone wrong. You've got a lot of detuned waveforms, a lot of glitch and sort of FM sounding noises, the sounds are nothing like the well laid out and the variety of the waveforms that are in there to begin with. So you end up with a completely sort of randomized waveform bank on not only the waveform ROM that's on the main board but also in the 72 pin SEM at this time because we've put in the Pactron from a Proteus 2000 <laughs> and it worked. So big up Emu. We'd have liked to have seen that um, actual official upgrade ROM um, but yeah, Homebrew's doing uh, different things and coming up with other ways to get sounds from these classic synthesizers. So it's almost like rediscovering your Morpheus or Ultra Proteus um, kind of combination there, a Franken Morpheus if you please. We decided to put one together in a 2U rack. We're working on that at the minute. We're going to show you some video of that soon and inside the chips that we've been talking about. I wouldn't say it wouldn't break your machine doing it if you tried some other thing. It's entirely up to your own risk. And I tell you, my heart was in my mouth when I turned it on the first time. But after that, it all made sense. So one of the main things to note about these IC swap from Ultra Proteus to Morpheus to enable us to power up that 72 pin socket so it's just reading them from the allocated sample waveform start location table <laughs> bit of a mouthful but basically that that one of those chips enables the Morpheus to read that socket with pre-mapped out sample start locations so changing your 72 pin sim if it did contain different data of some kind will definitely give you different results so far the composer ROM worked but when I say worked, it turns the machine into a complete glitch. Like the synth is melting down when you're selecting all these waveforms. It's not a world instrument anymore. It's purely like a mechanical glitch trance um, synth. You would have to start from scratch programming it. Everything is out of tune. So when you're swapping the ICs, get the correct removal tool and basically remove the chip without breaking the socket. Obviously checked the orientation, so before I swapped the chips, I simply took a photo of each machine to show the way the chips are orientated on the board. I'm not sure at this moment if you can swap the main board ICs independently or you you would have to swap them as a group. I swapped them as a group and I had positive results. You need to fire up that machine and start taming it uh, with a guitar tuner. Apply all the programming techniques that you already know because everything else works just the same. So the only big change will be the waveforms themselves and the way they're selected. So you're going to be really honing your sounds towards single cycle or multiple cycle waveforms for your patches. It transforms the unit into a kind of Morpheus on acid. It transforms the Morpheus into a complete glitch monster. 
you're going to have to get in there, program and tame it, tune each patch as you go along. Now I've actually made a video previously hinting on this process and you'll hear some random sounds showing the hybrid in action. Yeah, so the video you'll see that I think I will put a link in the description but it goes through testing the unit, the first kind of things that were generated from the unit and going on to test all the functions if they still worked. Everything did, it's like a mission there. On the KP66 I believe, which is one of the chips on the sound effects engine. The mind is troubling people. I've seen it before and I'm sorry. I did what I did because I had to. So since that video we decided to add um, we've done the 2U rack, that's now completed, we've got get lo-fi, pitch, mod, oscillator to the internal main board. We've had some positive results, not all good. You might set this thing to detune and uh, make some crazy changes on the machine, but it can result in the machine crashing. We fitted in the 2U rack, we put the Line 6 uh, delay line foot pedal, tape echo and infinite delays. With a lot of hands-on controls there at the front, we've got those mounted on the panels. Let's go and take a look. <laughs> <laughs> 